Hello, Aubrey. How's it going today? I'm great, Lindsay. How are you? Excellent. Do you have a song in your heart right now? <laughs> Uh, yes, there's this new song by Weezer called A Little Bit of Love that I listen to all the time. It's such a, it's just a feel good song, puts me in a really good mood, very positive. I love music that, that makes me feel happy. Oh, for sure. I love music that kind of brings me back to a time, you know, brings me back to a certain moment in my life, like high school graduation, college days, traveling the world. Music can evoke so much in us. Yes, absolutely. Right. I agree. I was excited. We're answering a listener question today, you guys. And I loved reading it because I love music. I always have. And Noran Muhammad commented on our YouTube video for the episode when we t shared our um, TV recommendations oh, and cool. said, we'd love to hear your recommendations for different types of singers too. And I'm excited because I have so many bands, so many singers that I would love to recommend. Yeah, guys, don't forget this episode. If you're listening on the podcast, it's also over on YouTube. So go to YouTube, hit subscribe on our channel and check it out. Now, did we talk about music anywhere else on other than the, the well, we talked about TV. What about yes. music? Yeah. Yes, I was able to interview Tommy with um, Learn English with Tommy. Okay. If you missed it, this was over on the IELTS Energy podcast, but it was really interesting. He gave a lot of recommendations that would be good for anyone on how to use music, books, and film to learn English. So great for students studying for IELTS, but for everyone listening, it's so smart to be engaged, to increase engagement, right? Listen to what you love. That's our first tip for why? Why should you learn English through reading music lyrics and listening to songs? Yeah. And I think broadly speaking of music, you know, as the connection skill to get to know someone, people do kind of not in a negative way, but they judge you. They size you up based on what you say, who you say your favorite bands are. I like that That's expression, true. Aubrey, size you up. Size you up. What does mm -hmm. that mean? Kind of determine something about your personality or what type of person yes. you are. It's yes. true. Our music tastes do kind of say something about us, right? And it also helps us see what we have in common with others. It is a bridge for connection. When you ask someone what type of music they listen to, you find out a band that you both love. It's such a fun bonding moment. It's also kind of a generational bonding moment because I know there's some a friend of mine here, a family friend here in Denver is about my age. I think she's just a year older than me and she loves Pearl Jam. But people in our circle who are 10 years younger than us, they don't like Pearl Jam because That's they're just true. it's just another generation. <laughs> so kind of we share that as a laugh kind of oh yeah, Pearl Jam like it makes me feel like I connect with her on an age basis. Do you know what I mean? Yes. And then together you could maybe um, have a little jab at like the new pop yeah. or rock Backstreet or rap Boy. that you're like, mm, boy bands yeah. or whatever yes. it was then and what it is now. <laughs> right. Exactly. Totally. Exactly. Yes, yeah. I agree. So this is going to be fun. We're going to, for first giving you three reasons that you should be learning English through music. The mm -hmm. first I just shared, like, this is such a good way to increase engagement, right? Mm -hmm. You want to enjoy learning English. And we've talked about how that means choosing books and TV shows that you love and find interesting. Same for music. If you can find music in English, that's yes. your type of music. You're going to enjoy listening to those songs, reading the lyrics. It keeps your brain engaged. Oh my gosh, it's huge. It's huge. And then the second reason, Aubrey, is because we get idioms, we get expressions, right? Exactly. Slang, interesting phrases, metaphors, idioms. Songs are full of this where musicians are trying to be a little poetic, a little interesting in the way they're you know, bringing across their message. So you learn so much great vocab. Yeah. I remember when I taught in New York City, I used to use uh, Hotel California a lot in my classes. Like we awesome. would print out the lyrics and I used to use ironic Al Alanis Morissette to try to talk about irony. And that's always... <laughs> Oh, it's funny. always a hard thing to teach, even with the song, right? Yes, so try to and I did the same yeah. in French, where I would get like French rap or interesting French songs. And my high school students were so engaged because they loved music. They were right. excited to listen to some music in French. Oh, fun. And so the same thing. Yeah, like your, your English students, it's such an interesting way to learn new vocab. And it's just fun. We just like hearing music. It just feels good to the ears, you know? Absolutely. And so the third thing is pronunciation. Singing mm -hmm. along, reading the lyrics, hearing the musician sing it can also help with your pronunciation. Mm -hmm. So not only is it fun, but you're getting these great pronunciation classes just by singing along to music. All right. So in today's episode, you guys are going to get some of our personal recommendations, right? So you can size us up and understand yes. who we are as people. Um, so Aubrey, 
give it to us. What is your number one recommendation? My number one is the Avett brothers. It's spelled A-V-E-T-T. Okay. They're two brothers, and it's a very much a bluegrass folk type of sound, which is a little bit like American country, but sort of older sounding. And really quick, just to talk about those types of music, you're going to hear classical traditional instruments, right? There's a lot of um, banjo, ukulele, harmonica, Sometimes they play the saw, where it's just like a saw. You would cut a tree and they're playing it like an instrument. So it's this sort of older sounding classical acoustic type sound. Yeah. Thinking about the differences between bluegrass and country, in my mind, for some reason, bluegrass is a little cooler. That might be because I'm not a country music listener, but it's got some, it's got some Appalachia to it. It makes me think a little bit of Nashville, although of course, country music comes from Nashville, but it makes me think of cool um, kind of bad backwoods but also cool at the same time hip but also sort of I don't know what how would you describe it has a certain something country? right this is yeah. an interesting native expression yeah. where we'll say it just has a certain something when we don't yeah. quite know how to put our finger on something exactly. I agree it has this cool unique sound so I feel like country music all originated from the same sound, like what you're talking about, that kind of backwoods with just these very basic instruments. And then it sort of splintered off to become folk mu- music, bluegrass, or that country, American country from that we think of more with like the South in the United yeah. States. Yeah. And they each have a very distinct sound now. And you hear a sound and you'd say like, okay, that's country Western or that's bluegrass, bluegrass. right? But it's a little hard to describe because they're sort of using the same instruments, but mm. the lyrics sort of change and the Lyrics. style has changed. Well, I was going to say, could could some of it be a little less twangy, number one, and also, yes. but country music has also become a little less twangy, but I wonder if some of it is the lyrics, the focus of the story, because a lot of country music is really just... Um, it's about like kind of tragedy sort of sometimes or like a truck and this and my dog and this this kind of thing. It does I feel seem like maybe- to have certain <laughs> themes, right? <laughs> so I feel like bluegrass is a little less like that. Um, yes, I agree. Yes. And it's interesting to see how some of them merge, right? Some bands right. Will, will pull in aspects of all of it because no one is really pigeonholed. Like we say, yeah. no one is really stuck in a certain genre or a certain style. Mm-hmm. So sometimes they experiment and one album will sound more country and then the next one will sound more folk or bluegrass. So it's yeah. interesting. But Avett Brothers is very much indie folk. Okay. Some people would call it bluegrass. The th- I want to recommend it to you guys because first of all, it's just beautiful. The two songs I would recommend listening to first are I and Love and You is the song. And the second one is Head Full of Doubt. Mm -hmm. The lyrics are very easy to understand, right? Because it's more of an acoustic sound with the music. It's beautiful with the instruments, but you can understand the lyrics. So you do want to, it's always good to follow along with the lyrics that you can find online. Mm -hmm. But most of these songs, you are going to understand the lyrics as they sing. It's a little more of like a talking style with the singing. A little more approachable. People exactly. say the reason they love country music and maybe bluegrass too is that they can relate to the lyrics, right? They feel like it's talking about their own lives, you know? Yes. And mm-hmm. I think you're going to find that with these songs, right? It is about love and these two songs and about doubting yourself and things that it's the human, human experience. Human Everything things. experiences yeah. these. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. What else, Aubrey? So my second recommendation is a band that I've loved since I was very young. My (laughs) first CD was Weezer. I talked about that new song, A Little Bit of Love. They're a very prolific band, which means they come out with so much music, multiple albums each year. And they've done so since 1992. They have so Mm -hmm. many albums. My two top recommendations are two of their newest songs that one a little bit of love and the second one's called all my favorite songs which that continues and it says all my favorite songs are slow and sad which (laughs) I love because it's like a rock song and it's pretty poppy but the Mm -hmm. message is like all my favorite songs are really slow and sad I love it it's such a it's (laughs) irony right it's really funny I don't think I know Weezer but that doesn't mean anything my music knowledge is very very shallow it's I'm ashamed sometimes people ask me what do you like to listen to like I don't know. Here's a few bands. You know, I'm not a huge music person, to be honest, and I should be. I listen to podcasts when I'm walking, not so much music, but I should. Are you usually listening to music or podcasts or nothing when you're, I think you go for a walk. 
I think a pretty even blend, right? Okay. If mm-hmm. I'm running for sure music with a beat that keeps me going. Um, I do like a, a stationary bike, the Peloton and also music while well, the, the teacher, yeah. but if I'm just on a kind of a leisurely stroll, I'm going to put on a podcast or if I'm driving, I'm going to listen to a podcast. So I get a pretty even blend of both. Interesting. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. Well, these are good recommendations. So your number one, it's Avit Brothers, right? Not Avit. 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 Okay. Mm-hmm. Avit Brothers and then Weezer. Oh, okay. exactly. And good that one's definitely know. rock and roll, right? Weezer's rock kind of roll. pop rock. Mm-hmm. I don't like, but it just says rock when I looked it up online. So I, I have a feeling Weezer would not call themselves pop at all. It's definitely more just like classic rock and roll, but yeah. also really great melodies and beats because I don't love all rock and roll, but I love a Weezer. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right. Well, I could make a recommendation here, Aubrey. Should I go ahead and throw it out yes, there? Yes, I want to hear two from you as well, Lindsay. I think okay. we should share two. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So one band that I really love is Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. So I just saw a special on him last night on the news, how they, I think he passed away a few years ago. Yes. Um, but their last tour uh, happened in San Francisco and just the way they were interviewed and what they the band said about playing it feels like their music is very pure and that they love it for the music not so much for the fans or for being rock stars on tour they actually love the music itself i Um, get that feeling when i listen to tom petty i feel like and the band tom petty and the heartbreakers i always love them it's very melodic and a a lot of emotion right i feel i feel the feels that they're feeling when they sing so that makes sense to me exactly and for me, a big part of why I love Tom Petty is more the time in my life when I was really listening to him heavily. And that was in high school when I got my first car, right? And he has all these fun songs that kind of make you want to drive, driving music, road trip yes. music. And so many times with my friends being the first driver among all my friends and just going out there on the open road and getting that freedom. So for me, Tom Petty is freedom. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love the word heartbreakers in their title. This is kind of a very idiomatic word, right? To talk about someone being a heartbreaker really just means that they're very good looking and like people (laughs) like them. Like they easily, right? It'd be like, oh, she's going to be a heartbreaker. We say that about kids that are like cute or whatever. And you know, they're going to grow up and like break a lot of hearts, meaning they're going to probably like date a lot of people and then leave them by the wayside. (laughs) Exactly. And, And the lyrics are thoughtful. Yeah, it's just pure music in some way for for me. Yeah, I would say that. And then the second recommendation, Aubrey, is Credence Clearwater Revival. All the names of the bands I like are kind of long names, but (laughs) interesting names. CCR, we call them CCR. And they've done some songs like Fortunate Son, um, Grapevine, heard it through the Grapevine. I'm not sure if they were the original creators of that one. I don't know if it was a cover. I don't know. Or if it was a cover, but check them out. So I would put them into the classic rock category. I've had people try to tell me it's country, but I don't buy that. I agree. It's classic rock because my dad hates country and he listened to CCR. (laughs) So it must be classic rock. (laughs) (laughs) So it sounds like you and I both connected with our dads over CCR. Same with me. I remember being in the car listening to CCR with my dad coming back from skiing. So again, music goes back to our connections with people, actually. And that's something you guys could tie into your conversations with native speakers around music. Right. Absolutely. Right. Music, that, especially what you listen to when you were younger, brings up so much nostalgia. I'm the same. I think about hanging out with my dad, listening to CCR because he had it on all the time. And <laughs> that is such a great thing to ask people about. What kind of music did you listen to as a kid? Has it changed? What do you listen to now? This is such an interesting topic of conversation. Yeah, this is so good. So what should we leave our listeners with today? We've, we've covered a few bands here and talked about styles of music, bluegrass, country, classic rock. Where should we leave our listeners? Yeah, we definitely recommend you listen to music in English to improve your engagement with what you're listening to, but also your vocabulary, your pronunciation. Get recommendations from many different English speakers from different cultures, as well as other language learners who are also listening to music in English. Every, I feel like everyone will have a great recommendation for music. Yeah, they absolutely will. And share your personal connections with this music. Don't overshare. Don't share too much. Make sure you you see the other person and see if they're engaged. Are they interested in what you're saying? But ask them too. What's your connection with this song? When did you first hear it? When did you like to listen to it? Were you a teenager? Were you a young adult? Right? Get into that stuff. This is the stuff of connection, Aubrey. 
Yes, absolutely. I, I think one of my favorite questions for someone to ask me is about what music I like, or if I have a recommendation, I get so excited about it. Music <laughs> and podcasts. I get so excited <laughs> to recommend something. So I think that's one of the best things you can ask a coworker, a friend, a family member is to ask them, can you recommend, you know, music? Can you tell me what's something new that I should be listening to? Or what's something maybe I missed from the past? Yeah, this is a true connection skill. So guys, if you want more connection skills here at Allers English, we focus on connection, not perfection. How can we use English not to obsess over our mistakes or to curl up, but to connect with who's right in front of us in any given moment, then hit follow on Allers English to get more episodes like this one. Aubrey? Awesome. Thanks so for fun, hanging Lindsay. out. Talk yes. to you soon. See All you later. Right. Bye. Bye.